What's going on guys? Uh, my name is Ben Fellows. I run Loop Software and Testing Services. We do a lot of videos and content on playwright automation, QA best practices, manual testing, and more. Uh, today, just wanted to quickly talk a little bit about a use case that we faced, which is the ability to move a storage state um, from one GitHub Actions uh, job to another. Um, the use case primarily stemmed from trying to shard a project that had upwards of 30 different storage states that we were creating. Now, there's a lot of different nuances for why we were having to do that. Um, and, and certainly that ultimately, I, I don't really know that I would advocate for always doing things with this kind of a workaround, but it's something that you should have in the back pocket if the right set of circumstances come up, right? Because there's also situations where maybe you just log in with the credentials as part of your test. But in this case, we, we felt like we needed to try to use global setup. Well, the problem with global setup was that when we sharded the suite, um, we were running global setup just in a completely unnecessary amount of time, right? And so ultimately what we decided to do is find a solution where we would uh, create the storage state once in a job, and then we would make the next matrix of jobs dependent on that job, and we would pass the storage state out of the GitHub Actions job and into the next job. Now, um, I am currently looking into the idea of could we just basically have one job reference the other job directly? Because if you can kind of picture it right now, what happens is we have a, a job, um, it generates an artifact coming out of it, and then we grab the next artifact. So that's the use case that we're gonna look at today is basically using a GitHub Actions job to pass an, an authenticated storage state to the next job. Um, first things first to note, if we have our little examples here, if you don't know how storage states work um, or what the role is for them, there's a bunch of videos, I'll try to link some of them below. Essentially, it's just gonna allow you to skip to a pre-authenticated uh, sort of role um, that you can only have to run this test once, get it to that point. In this case, it's just like trying to, to get through part of a, a um, like a pre-entry page. Um, and then the next one is gonna use a storage state. It just basically is loading the storage state test.use. So a lot more videos about storage states, you can check them out. But for today, let's talk a little bit more about um, GitHub Actions. And so, we're gonna jump over to the YAML file. Uh, for the most of you who are not familiar with GitHub Actions, you control the whole work through, uh, flow through a YAML file. This is that YAML file. So we have a, sort of an interesting looking one where we have an install job that basically caches Playwright in the install. I'm pretty sure I learned that from playwrightsolutions.com. He does a good job of explaining that. Um, we then split the job into basically um, one is kind of a larger generalized set of tests and then the other is a set of tests that has to live behind a storage state and then we basically merge all of those back together. We merge it and then we publish it to a, a page here. So the flow that we're going to look at specifically is going to be your set storage state and then we're going to look at pulling it down. So let's go down into the YAML file and let's look at set storage state. So um, it's gonna feel very similar to just running a normal test and the reality is it's because it is running a normal test, right? You're pulling in Playwright um, and then you are running a specific test. Um, now keep in mind, you really should think about your folder structure. As soon as you start to end up in a world with GitHub Actions, we are starting to have different jobs and different matrices of jobs. You do have to be able to reference specific folders and reference specific tests um, in, in order to uh, only run those, right? So in this case, we actually have a folder called storage states, and then we have another folder called set state, and then here is our job. And here's where it becomes important. Um, this job creates a file that is called storage.json. Now, I don't know that I have that file in here right now. No, oh, it is, it's perfect, it's right here, right? So here is the, the file that it's gonna create. And um, it's fine to have the file in already created, it will just upwrite or uh, uh, overwrite this file, excuse me. Um, so when we go back to our YAML file though, um, you can see it's essentially just using the upload artifact um, and then we're uploading a basic uh, default path basically and, and name um, and then we are going to move to the next job 
And this is where it becomes important to do a couple of things. Um, one is that you're going to do your standard start to the job. But the thing that I start off by doing is I always remove the file that existed on this uh, suite just in case it does. Now, um, the, the reason is, is because when you download something into a, a job on GitHub Actions, if it is a duplicate, I'm pretty sure it errors out. Um, and so what you can see is I start off by just removing the file. This actually passes regardless of whether or not there is a file there. It just basically deletes it. Uh, it's this uh, GitHub action right here. And then we download it. Um, and the nice thing about it is when you download it, you just download it to the default path. And then when Playwright runs and tries to use it, it actually just is basically put directly into the same path at the project base that it is here, right? So that is one of the really advantages of GitHub Actions. My grammar is off today, so apologies, is it basically just puts the, the file at the project base. Um, and then we are going to run it and run the storage state and then upload it. So um, essentially what we've done and this can apply to any file really, so keep that in mind, is basically uh, generate a file, in this case the storage state, upload that file, make sure that the next job needs that previous job to complete, start off then by clearing out that file from this job, re-downloading the new file that you want, and using it, and you're good, that's golden, and that is how you can set storage states and pass them to future jobs. Once again, this is basically just trying to do a workaround for not having to use global setup. My experience is that when you sharded global setup, you end up with a, a, an extremely unnecessary amount of runtime because every one of your shards is trying to run global setup. Uh, just do this instead, it's 10 times easier. Um, once again, if you like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out more of our content at www.workwithloop.com slash blog. And uh, feel free to drop us a comment or send me a DM on LinkedIn if you have any uh, questions or concerns. Thanks. Talk soon. Bye.